Hey guys, and welcome back to another multi-threading tutorial with Python. So in this video, we're going to be talking about synchronizing threads and using something called locking threads. And essentially what that means is allowing our threads to wait for another thread to finish before they go. And what I mean by that is in the last video, we saw that when one thread was waiting or was pausing, the other thread would automatically run. And then when that one paused, the next one would go. But for example, if the first thread ran, it waited one second, but the next thread didn't wait at all, it would just continue to run that thread until it finished, right? So maybe there's some instances where we need to finish one thread before we can move on to another thread. And I'm going to show you an example of that right now. So you guys see where this might be useful. So essentially, let's think of an example like this. OK, so we're thinking about kind of like a payment system, a checkout, um, like a cash online. OK, so you have our main checkout, which is right here. And there's kind of three main functions of the checkout. So they've selected their item. The first thing we need to do is we need to process payment. OK, the next thing we need to do is send some kind of confirmation email to that client or to that user and just say, this is your shipping information. Let's say they bought like a T-shirt or something um, and say, thank you for shopping with us. Right. And then the next thing that we have to do is we have to redirect them back to the either the original website and say like purchase more stuff or say load or say thank you. So essentially this I'm just saying load thank you page as an example, um, but like load another web page. OK, these are the three things we need to do. So these would all be in their own threads. OK, this is what we're going to do this multi threaded. You could do this single threaded, but we're going to do this multi threaded the way. So what we need to do right is well, processing payment is going to take a few seconds, right? Let, let's say this takes like five seconds to run. Okay. That's, that's a five and that's an S I know you can, probably not can tell sending a confirmation email. Let's say this takes like 10 seconds. Okay. I don't know how long it actually takes, but to like connect to the server and send it. And let's say loading this thank you page takes like three seconds. Okay. So five seconds, 10 seconds, three seconds. Now let's think, well, we can't really send them a confirmation email until this payment's been processed. So until they validate like the visa or whatever the card is, right? We can't really do any of these other threads until that is complete because well, if it doesn't work, then we have to tell them something else, right? So this needs to happen before we can do one of these two. That's just important to understand. But once this happens and we process the payment, sending this confirmation email might take a long time to be able to connect to the server, um, to actually send that email out. Think about it. It could probably take a few seconds to do. So rather than, you know, waiting just to connect to the server, sending the confirmation email and then loading the thank you page, which would take us 10 seconds to send the confirmation email and then load the thank you page. Let's load the thank you page in the background in its own thread while this sending confirmation email is waiting. So waiting to connect to the server or something like that. So essentially the user is able to see this thank you page before the email is sent, or maybe they see it around a similar time. And essentially the reason we would do this is because I don't sure if you guys actually know, but when you try to load a page on Google, most users actually click off of the page or click exit on the tab. If, uh, if it takes more than like two seconds to load the page, I don't know the exact number, but it's very short and like 50% of people will exit out of the tab. Um, if the web page doesn't load in a certain amount of time, it might be like five seconds or something, but here, right? If sending confirmation email is going to take 10 seconds, then they might think something's wrong and they might refresh the page or they might click exit and that might like that could possibly mess up our program or it would just be like you don't want the user to leave the website you want them to maybe continue shopping or something like that right so these are our tasks now right now we don't really have a way of doing this we could set up three threads we could run them but what would happen is if this waited for a second to uh i don't know do something else right like to connect or to validate the card to get receive information from a server then what would happen is this would start sending automatically. And then if that waited, this would happen, right? And we don't want that to happen. So what we need to do is essentially lock a thread so that these only can go after our process payment is done. So that's what we're going to do now. And it's very easy to do this. Okay, so let me put this little drawing tab away. So that's just a real life example because I want you to get see when you would actually use this because you might think it's kind of useless. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a locking object uh, in threading. And the way we do that is I'm just going to create a variable. This is again the same code as last time. It's all going to be on my website. I'm going to say thread lock is going to equal threading dot lock. Okay, and this is just kind of a new uh, object. Let me just make sure this is correct. Yeah, that is correct. And all I'm going to do is in this run here. So when we run the thread, I'm going to lock the thread and then release it once it's finished. And I'll show you how this works. So I'm going to say thread lock, which is going to be a global variable dot acquire, which essentially means lock the thread um, and don't let any other thread run unless this thread finishes. And then what this does is we say thread lock dot release. 
And what this does is release the lock or release the lock on the thread so that as soon as this uh, function is done happening, we release the lock, which allows another thread to start running. So notice how we're delaying some time in the last code we did. It went like one, two, one, two, one, two, right? If you haven't seen that video, I recommend you watch that. But here you're going to see what happens when I run the program and how the, uh, the locking actually works. Okay, so let's do this. So thread one, thread one, thread one, and it's going to go and finish thread one. And only once it's finished thread one, it'll do thread two. Even though in reality before, right, we had to go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and that's how it should work. But since we're locking it, that means we can't do any other thread until this one's finished. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate that example that we just kind of drew out and created uh, using a third thread. So what I'm going to do actually, though, is sorry, I commented these out because I was testing something, but we'll leave those like that. I'm going to copy this thread class and all I'm going to do is essentially just make it called my thread two, and I'm just going to uh, change the location of this release. So I'm just going to bring thread lock dot release. I'm going to put it up here. So essentially what happens in here is we acquire the lock, which means that we're uh, we're going to lock the thread, but we're also going to see if any other thread is locked before we like continue to do the next step. That's that's what this is doing as well. And then as, after we do that, we're just immediately going to re release it. The reason we need this here is because if we don't have this release, it's going to lock the thread and never unlock it. So it's like what we're kind of doing here is we're checking if any other thread is locked. If it is, then we're going to wait before we continue moving in this run function. Um, otherwise, then we'll lock the thread instantly release it, do this, and then you'll, you'll see how this works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a third thread. So I'm going to say thread three equals my thread two, and I'm going to change thread two to be my thread two as well. I'm going to give it ID three. I'm going to call this um, actually loading page. I'm going to change the names of these so it makes more sense. I'm going to change thread two. Instead of thread two, we'll call this sending email. And for thread one, we'll say, payment okay and i'll actually make these the times that i said so let's say process payment is five sending email takes 10 seconds and loading the page takes three now all i'll do is i'll start these threads again so I'll say thread three dot start and then at the end here thread three dot join and let's let's see if i made any mistakes or not but i think with that we should actually just be exactly simulating the situation that i kind of said to you guys so let's run this now and let's see so uh, starting payment. Okay, so we're doing payment, payment, payment. Uh, let's make this full screen. Exiting payment. Okay, now we're sending email, loading page, sending email, loading page, exiting loading page, and then sending the email, right? So when we exit loading page, technically loading page will still be like up on the screen, but we're just done loading it. So essentially, since this um, sending email was taking like a few seconds to send, it was loading the page as well whenever it broke or whenever it stopped working. So now the page is open here. Um, and the email is still sending, which means that we've loaded the page faster to our user. So we've got more users to stay on our website um, rather than them having to wait like 10 or 13 seconds to load that page, right? Which is a long amount of time. Think about waiting 15 seconds, 13 seconds for a page to load. You'd probably think something was wrong. So essentially that is kind of it on how we lock threads. Very simple. You just got to use this acquire and release. If you're kind of confused on how these work, I recommend you just play around with them. And if you want to create more threads that use different functions, I recommend you do that as well. With that being said, uh, follow my Twitter, join my Discord, and obviously subscribe to the channel if you're not. And I will see you again in the next video.